Hey, how's it going everyone? Uh, please excuse my hair and my beard. I haven't shaved or got a haircut in a while because, you know, I'm lazy. So today's video is how to be a pilot when you have no money, like me. So I'll get started with a little bit of uh, background on my financial situation. I guess the best way to put it into words would be like the other day I realized if I skip my lunch and just move down to two meals a day instead of three, I can save a lot of money. You know, if that says anything about how I'm doing, um, you know, I'm I'm broke. And and when you're poor, that's just what you do, you know? You, you just don't eat sometimes. That's just how it goes. But anyway, I live in Sonoma County, and if you don't already know, it's one of the most expensive places to live in the U.S. It's it's outrageous. The rent prices out here are just insane. It's just, it's just ridiculous. I, I can't stand it. And that also goes for flying. The prices to rent a 172 out here are kind of ridiculous. And you know, flying is expensive as it is, so it's, that doesn't make it any easier. So by the time I finish my commercial single and multi check rides, from the start of when I was a student pilot to then, I will have spent somewhere around thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars. I managed to pay for about fifteen thousand dollars of that, and the rest was on my parents. So basically, I got a loan from my parents instead of the banks. That being said, I am extremely grateful that they support me so much and have helped me throughout the process of getting my licenses and all that. And we're not a wealthy family. It hasn't been easy for them to just cough up 20 grand over the course of five years to do all my flight training. You know, it's it's basically taking every last cent for them too. And yeah, I did my training over the course of about five years. Uh, I started when I was 17, I'm 22 now. There's no way I could have done it in like a year. That just, it, we didn't have the money and I didn't want to take out a loan back then. So that's just the way it goes. You know, you can get it done faster, but you know, make sure you have the money to do it. So how do I afford to do things outside of aviation? Uh, I don't. I basically just work full time and study. That's it. Uh, I can't afford to do anything else. I don't go out, I don't go on vacations or anything like that. I really can barely afford to drive anywhere on my days off, so I, you know, try to stay at home and save as much money as I can. Now, last year I did go on a vacation with my girlfriend. We both saved up for like a year and a half and I wasn't flying at that time and we managed to go to Hawaii for a week, which was just awesome. But yeah, so it wasn't easy for us to do that, and uh, we're not constantly going places and having fun, and you know, when we do get to do that, it's a, it's a real treat. But when I was building hours for my uh, commercial and instrument, I still, I managed to have a little bit of fun, you know, and I would take friends places and split the rental costs with them, so it made it a little easier, and we had a lot of fun, you know, but other than that, I really can't afford to do anything else, at least right now. So it, it kind of sucks, but you know, you get what you get. Don't throw a fit. Now I have some advice for other people that may be in the same situation. The first thing is if you're still living at home, stay there as long as you can. Stay here. Stay as long as you can. Cherish it. And I really mean that, you know, while it sucks living at home with mom and dad, trust me, it's worth it. Stay at home, save your money, because once you get out there on your own and you start living on your own, financial responsibilities will start to pile up and uh, it makes it really difficult to get through flight training at that point. And another thing is make sure you have the money to get through your entire rating or training or whatever you're going for before you start. Because if you get like halfway through your instrument rating and then you hit a plateau and you don't have enough money to pay for your next lesson and you have to take a break, that's gonna hurt your proficiency because when you get back in the airplane, you will have forgotten some stuff, you'll have to relearn some stuff. And in the long run, you'll be paying more. So it'll hurt you more financially if you don't have all the money to begin with. And one more thing, this is a little piece of advice that a friend passed down to me. Make sure that you do all the studying before you get in the airplane. Basically, make sure you're ready for your check ride before you even start your training. It can't hurt you to be more prepared. If you're underprepared, you'll show up to a lesson and you might end up spending more with your instructor teaching you ground because you didn't do your studying ahead of time. And like I said before, you can't afford to be spending extra money on flying lessons or ground time especially if you're on a budget. You want to get everything done with the minimum amount of time possible. It takes some people longer, but most of the time when that happens, it's because they didn't study ahead of time and they weren't completely prepared before they started their training. So that's the best advice I have for you guys. Just save your money, don't do anything extra, and if you have to take out a loan, then, you know, 
that's just what you got to do. But it's worth it to get everything done as quickly as you can right now because it's a really good time for pilots. Um, you know, if you're just coming out with your commercial and you want to get into aviation and get a job. So yeah, just just get on it, get it done as as fast as you can. And honestly, just, just do the best you can. That's really all you can do. If you don't have the money, you don't have the money. You just gotta wait a little bit and save up or take out a loan. That's, that's just how it goes. You know, not to discourage you guys, it's just, Flying is a lot of money. It's it's hard. It's I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's going to take a lot of money. It's going to be hard on you financially. And I'm sure a lot of you already know what you're getting into. If you want to be a pilot, you already understand how much it's going to take from you and you know the kind of lifestyle you're going to be living. But yeah, it's just that's just what you do. It's a passion, and then you you just deal with it. So I guess that answers the question: Can you be a pilot when you're broke? Yes, you can. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's gonna be really tough, but you can do it. I'm struggling right now and it, it sucks, but you know, I'm making it through. But it'll be worth it in the long run because I'll be doing what I love and making fairly decent money doing it. So don't get discouraged, don't give up, just keep trucking and you'll, you'll make it just fine. Also, guys, make connections. It's really important to do that in aviation. That's basically what it's all about, especially if you wanna get a job flying. And it can also help you with your training. You might find someone that wants to help you out. So make connections split rates with passengers, fly with other pilots. There's cheaper ways to do it. Well, guys, I think that does it for this video. Let me know what you think. And if you're in a similar situation, um, just know you're not the only one out there and you'll be fine. But like this video, subscribe if you want more, and um, hopefully new videos will be coming out soon. Uh, we'll see, hopefully next week. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.